everyone, Matt Kleskowski here, and I uh, got a video for you for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I just felt it was time to do a video, but two, uh, I wanted to do this. Uh, I, I taught a seminar, a Lightroom seminar in Toronto the other day, and uh, I'd gone out shooting the night before, and I took this photo. And I showed it during the seminar, and somebody came up after and said they wished that I'd gone through. I went through a bunch of editing that day, and they'd wish that I'd gone through the, the editing process for the photo. And I thought that would have been a great idea. So this is a big thank you to everybody that came out. Um, I figured I'd go through the process right here for you. Okay? All right. So a uh, couple, uh, let's go jump into Lightroom here. We'll start off. I'm going to go to the Develop module, and uh, we'll go to the Basic panel here. I'm going to just kind of tweak the white balance a little bit, just a little bit more blue. A little bit more magenta. It's going to enhance that twilight. Uh, and I like shooting cityscapes at twilight. You get the lights here. This is after the sun goes down. You get all the lights in the skyline where if the sun's still up, you don't see that quite as much. Helps if you shoot for sunset instead of sunrise because there's more people around. And um, and typically uh, not on the weekends. This was on a Sunday. It probably would have had more lights during the week. All right, exposure-wise, I think we're pretty good. I'll head up here to the histogram. I'll just show you the quick settings here. ISO 100, uh, 70 millimeters on my 70 to 200 uh, Nikon lens with a D800. F8, 30 seconds. I think I had a three-stop ND filter on to blur the clouds and water. Yes, I could have stopped down on the camera. I chose I wanted to shoot it at F8 just because of that's what I feel for, for that lens and, and that whole combination there. So that was my personal preference. By all means, you could feel free to try this at a, uh, at a different F-stop, and you could probably still get 30 seconds and blur the clouds. And I like the contrast of the, the, the water. First off, the water was choppy which is why I wanted to blur it. And of course the clouds, you get that streakiness too. And I like the contrast of the blur with the sharp. That's why I like a lot of long exposures, especially for outdoor photos. All right, so uh, let's go ahead here. Not too much on exposure. Highlights will leave alone shadows. I'll kind of punch that up a little bit. Whites and blacks, I hold down my option or alt key, drag to the right on the whites to get a good white point. And same thing to the left on the blacks to get a good black point. Just a little bit of clarity. I'm going to leave vibrance and saturation alone. I think we're good on color here, so I'm not going to really worry about it. Uh, we'll grab our spot removal tool. Just a couple of spots to take care of here. And I'm sure I'll miss some, but we will be in Photoshop in a minute, so we can get rid of them then. Uh, if I look at the skyline here, I'm going to go my lens corrections. You can see it's just off, or not the skyline, the, the horizon line. It's just off a little bit. So I'm going to hit the horizontal transformation, and that'll take care of it. I don't want to rotate it because that'll rotate the building. But the horizontal transformation will take care of that and still keep the building straight. We'll hit Constrain Crop. we got that little gray area here, so we don't have to crop it, or it'll crop it for us. And uh, that's looking pretty good. The only other thing I noticed is by tweaking the, um, by coming up here and tweaking the whites and the blacks and the shadows. Uh, oh, you know what I want to do? tone curve. I don't use the tone curve a lot. I do want to punch up the highlights a little bit. So I can punch that up, but I can still pull the rest of the curve down before, after. And that does make the sky a little bit brighter. So we'll go to the graduated filter, take it down by a stop, and just drag down. And I can get away with it here, especially because the CN tower is the only thing that is is protruding through. If, the, if it were down here, it'd be a little bit harder because the buildings get darker. But I think it works really well for this one. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, at this point, we're going to go over into Photoshop. Just a couple of Photoshop things that I want to do with it. Um, and really nitpicky stuff, so it's not even, it's not really that big of a deal. But um, I got it here, so I, I always like to go in here and just do a couple little, little bit of cloning. We're going to knock down the size because it was a D800 file. I'll keep the uh, progress bars off for you so that you don't have to sit here and watch. And I'll take my clone stamp tool and just see if I can come in here, get rid of some of these cranes. There's a lot of construction going on, so I'm not gonna try to get rid of everything. I, if I had some more time, I might spend and try to get rid of that. Uh, you know, that's that's really there. It's not journalism though, so we could get rid of it. It doesn't do much for me. It's like an ugly antenna. I know, it's cheating. We'll leave those alone. Uh, let's see here. Here's another little crane, again. We'll get rid of it because we can. And just look around the photo, make sure we didn't miss anything. I'll switch to my spot removal tool. There's another little spot that I missed. There is a, it's either a plane or a UFO. You decide. 
we'll get rid of it though just to not start any crazy rumors um so i think we're doing pretty good there i'm gonna hop into uh, on one's perfect effects uh, just because they have a tonal contrast plugin that I like. A lot of plugins have, have tonal contrast in them. I'm not quite sure what they do. They just do something that I can't ever seem to recreate well inside of Photoshop. So I kind of like them. And I like all the other effects that they have. So it's a good place to stop in. We'll go to contrast. I'll come down here to tonal contrast. In fact, let me look at the look. Ooh, it looks a little dark. I don't mind it. Kind of, I will go with tonal contrast on this one. And I am going to take the brightness down a little bit. I'll add a little bit more clarity to it. So you can see before, after. I am going to do one thing, though. I don't like it on the sky quite as much. So I'm going to go to the brush, the masking brush, which just basically means it's going to paint it away. I'm going to turn on the perfect brush, which means I can go along the skyline and not be really particular about what I'm painting here because it'll mask it automatically for me. And uh, I'm just going to go along and paint it away. Once I've done that with the perfect brush, then I'll switch to the other brush. Just turn perfectness off uh, just because it's uh, it just moves a little bit faster. So I'm just painting away that, that contrastiness from the sky because I like the nice blurry sky. I just don't like... I, I, I don't want I don't want it to get that harsh feeling that I get when I put it onto the skyline here. Okay, we'll go ahead here and we'll click Add. I'm going to go down to let's go to Vignettes. I could do it in Lightroom or Photoshop, but I'm here. I might as well do it, and I like theirs. Uh, so we'll go to here, crank up the midpoint, crank up the feather, change the roundness a little bit. That's looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and hit Apply. So it's going to apply everything. It's going to leave me with a layer back over inside of Photoshop. And you're going to see, I'm going to do one quick thing here. If you notice, the, the water gets pretty dark. Okay. I'm going to add a mask to this layer and take my brush. I'm going to take the brush tool down to about 40% and just paint everything off of there. Just about 40%, just so it doesn't get quite as dark as it was if you look over at the layer mask. All right. Command Option Shift E. Merge everything onto one layer. We'll finish this up with some sharpening. Unsharp mask. I'll zoom in. I just want to sharpen enough to see the buildings get sharp, but not introduce any texture to the sky. I think 150, 1 1.4 radius works pretty good. If you live in Toronto on this skyline, beware. We can see you. Somebody's getting out of the shower in this one. I'm just teasing. They could be, but I can't see it. All right, so I think we got a. Uh... Oh, too far. Looks good. All right, so we'll click OK. Zoom back out. And uh, here's our final image. We're just going to go hit File, Save. All right, it's going to save the image. I don't have to change the name or anything like that. It'll keep the link alive to Photoshop and Lightroom. So we'll just hop over here to Lightroom. And I am going to do one last thing here. I'm going to go over to um, I'm going to go over to my graduated filter. And I'm going to zero out the exposure setting. I'm going to take the temperature to the left and the tint to the right. So more blue and more magenta. And I'm just going to drag a graduated filter down just to enhance the sky and the color in the sky just a little bit more. It's very, very subtle, but I think it just helps add to the color here. Okay, so more, more blue, more magenta right here in the sky. Just do it with the graduated filter. It's not going to make any other changes to it. Okay, so I do hope, uh, oh, let's do this. Let's, let's check out the before here. So reset. Shift tab, the L key a couple of times, turn everything off. That's before. Oh gosh, we're gonna hold on. Let me turn off the let me turn off the graduated filter so you don't see a big line through it. Once again, that's before and that's after. One more time. Before, after. So there's the entire editing process for you. If you came to the seminar, thank you so much. I uh, hope you in, enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of it. If you didn't come to the seminar, thank you very much. Um, I just thanks for stopping by today. But I, I really did want to do this for everybody that came by as well. Um, I took this, like I said, right out of Toronto Islands, got off of the ferry. It was a $7 ferry ride. Uh, so if you're in that area or you're going to visit that area, it's a great place to go shoot. And uh, I got off the ferry at Ward Island and just went to the beach on the left-hand side. There's another place, Center Island, which I would have gone to, but it was just really windy. And I realized very quickly I was not dressed for it. Um, so I stayed as close to the ferry area as possible because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss 
the next one back and have to wait another 45 minutes or an hour after that to uh, to catch the next one. So I stayed pretty close. But if if I had some more time and it wasn't it wasn't quite as cold, I would have uh, wandered off to a couple of different areas because there's a lot of great viewpoints. Okay, thanks again for uh, stopping by today. Hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you again soon.